Hi all, my name is Davis and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things tech and today we are exploring a piece of tech that I suspect that I will probably be using for a very long time. I mean, reviewing new phones and laptops is exciting, but there are very few products that come onto my table that I feel that I will be developing a long-term relationship with. And the product that we are talking about today is the new Logitech MX Creative Console. It is a brand new control surface for your Mac or PC that can not only transform the way that you use your Adobe Creative apps, but it also comes at a relatively affordable price. And the main reason why it's going to be staying in my arsenal for a long time is how well it works at improving my workflow. But before we go on, I would just like to thank Logitech for sponsoring this video. I've been using Logitech devices for almost 20 years now since the G25 steering wheel and you would know that I don't promote a product that I genuinely don't love and adore. So let's take a look at the MX console and see just how I've incorporated it into my workflow. So inside this box you get a variety of things including this contextual dial pad over here. You also get a customizable keypad. You get this USB-C to USB-C cable and also most excitingly you get a pair of Duracell AAA batteries. Yep, they did not skimp out at all. Yes, this is finally a gadget that includes batteries. And if we take a look at the two pieces over here, we can see that I've received the graphite gray option which does look actually quite smart next to, wait for it, my MX mechanical keyboard and also my MX master mouse. This entire MX ecosystem does look rather good here. It's all the same graphite color. While the casing of both the dial pad and keypad are both made with 72% recycled plastic, it feels anything but recycled because the build quality is very solid on both and there's a certain heft to them as well. Let's take a closer look at the dial pad first. So the main feature of this piece is the dial and it's quite possibly my favorite part of the entire package. Not only is it crafted from aluminium so it's got a nice cool feel to it but it also has a very nice smooth movement. It feels like that it's been oiled very very well. On the top left over here we've got two buttons. Uh, one is concave and the other is convex and your fingers rest on here very well when you are using the dial pad. And on the right over here we've got this little textured wheel which also has the same very well oiled movement and feel as the main dial. Underneath here we've got space for another button over here and we've got another one here too. And the one over here on the right is quite interesting. We'll get to this a little bit later. I really do like the grips on the bottom as well. It really works quite well in preventing any slip when you're using it. So it's a pretty cool piece of hardware. So how about the other half? Well, the keypad product is quite similar in design. It has the same rounded um, corners, uh, it's made of the same recycled plastic material, and it feels relatively solid. On the front, we do have nine customizable buttons that are made of a clear plastic material, and below that, we've got two additional buttons to flick between your icons. Quite interestingly though, this is not battery powered, rather it's powered by this USB-C cable and I'm very happy that it's USB-C now. And if you prefer it not to lie so flat on a table, it also comes with a very funky stand um, and it's got a very grippy bottom too. So it just fits like that. So now that we've taken a look at the hardware, let's take a look at the Logi Options Plus software that you will need to use it. So firstly, it greets you, which is um, rather nice. As we can see here, it says good evening. And down here, it says that I'm using the beta, which means that it might be different from what you will eventually use. But we can see that our two devices here are paired and it also recognizes the, that we've got the graphite version, which I think is very impressive. And the idea of this app is that we use it to configure just how we would like to use our control panels. So let's click on the creative dial pad first. So we can go inside here and customize all of the buttons. And you can set each one of these for almost anything. You can even map things like keyboard shortcuts to buttons. And what's so brilliant is that you can create a brand new profile for literally every single app on your computer. 
computer. For example, let's just quickly make a new profile for, uh, for Safari, let's say. So let's create an application profile and let's pick our favorite browser in the world. There we go, Safari. Let's start with a blank profile. So let's make the large dial pad something like, let's make it a mouse scroll up and down. And let's make this button over here a left click. And let's make this one over here a right click. And for the top two in the corner, how about we map them to take us backwards and forwards of web pages? So for that, we need to go into our keyboard shortcuts. And I believe um, for back, it's command and a bracket thing. So let's save that. And then for the other one, we want that to be forwards. And let's record the keystroke. So that's command and the other bracket thingy. I think that you can only just begin to figure out just how powerful this entire tool set might be. So now we're on the Logitech um, website, we can see that when I turn my dial, we are indeed scrolling like what we wanted it to do. And now let's press on this iPad thing. We can um, right click here. We are taken to the iPad case, the Combo Touch, which I've got a video on as well. So I think that we can begin to see just how powerful this feature set can be. And now let's take a look at the other half, the Creative Dial Pad. So on the face of the Creative Dial Pad, we've got nine customizable keys. And by default, we've got things like media controls, emojis, system volume, and fun things like that, which are mildly useful. But the great thing is, is that it's so obviously customizable. So let's make a new page and see some of the items that you can add. Um, so what I'm going to do is make a brand new page over here. And um, let's just, you know, play around with it. Um, we can, let's go into system and we can turn up our screen brightness here. We can make our screen brightness down over there. Um, let's add a clock to this one over here. Let's add the date. Let's add the time of year. Um, you sort of get the idea with that one. And I actually do quite enjoy these widgets that we've got over here. For example, we can do a stopwatch. We can have a beats per minute counter. And let's put a clipboard over here as well. So if I press the clipboard over here, we can see that we've got all of these different options over here, which can be very useful for your, for your copy and pasting um, enthusiasts. And um, let's have a look at the stopwatch. We can start the stopwatch five, six seconds. So you can see just how customizable and powerful this entire package is. But now let's get into the meat of this video because the reason why I love the MX Creative Console so much is the way that it improves my productivity when I'm using Adobe Creative Cloud apps. So let's start with my most used one, Premiere Pro. So I do love using Premiere Pro, however, when you're just using a mouse or touchpad in this case and keyboard, it can be a little bit clunky to use. And um, I think the thing that changes that mostly is the dial pad. So we can see over here, I've just got the default settings and I do think that they're pretty good. So basically this big knob just uh, lets you scrub through the timeline with a lot more finesse. And the scroll wheel up here just allows you to zoom in and out like so. When using conjunction with this button over here, which is used for playback, it's just the perfect way to smoothly scrub through your timeline. It is just so nice and allows you to scrub through a longer project with absolute ease. I just can't describe just how nice this is to use. Beyond that, we've just got these two buttons over here, which are set to undo and redo. So for instance, redo, undo, that is fun. And this button over here is quite a fun one because that brings up your action menu. And in this case, we've got to set to a lot of color grading options. So uh, for instance, we've got temperature over here. If we select temperature, we can just, uh, you know, we can see that we're making me very warm and cool. Um, if we change it to um, exposure, let's say, we can just use this style and make me very dark or very bright. And uh, we can see that this just uh, is another feature that allows you to uh, edit your videos a lot more quickly. Okay, so now let's take a look at the keypad. And I've just got the default options over here as well. It's all customizable, of course. Um, so this button takes you full screen and out of full screen, very nice and simple. 
We've got one just to save your project, um, like so. Let's save it, fantastic. Uh, we've got a button to import. We've got a button to uh, select your razor tool, let's say. I just wanna cut you here and get rid of the razor now, so that is fun. Oh, we've also got, let's get rid of Lumetri color, for instance. I wanna bring up my color grading option. I can just press this here, and then bam, here we go. Uh, let's also talk about, uh, you can quickly set your in and out point, so like so. This is all really good if you're just starting to learn Premiere Pro as well and you don't know any of the keyboard shortcuts. And um, my absolute favorite one is the quick export option because finally you've got a very satisfying button to press when you want to export your project. Take a look at that, absolutely brilliant. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at Premiere Pro, let's just have a quick look at, uh, let's say, what we can do in Lightroom. Because Lightroom is a little bit of a clunky app to uh, navigate usually. So you're using your arrow buttons um, to zoom in and out, it's, you know, it's a bit, it's not very nice and smooth. Um, but with the dial pad, um, this is all the default options as well. Um, you can use it to scroll between all of your images nicely and quickly. Take a look at that, it's simply lovely. And then you can use this wheel up here to zoom in and out. I think this is just such a lovely way to navigate your images. This button over here takes you between library and develop, something that I do a lot. So let's press this button again and we can change the tint like so. Look at that, absolutely hideous. And now a different form of hideous. With Lightroom as well, obviously we do have our keypad. Um, for instance, we can do things like rating our photos. Is this a three star photo or a five star photo? I think it's a one star photo, so let's rate it that. Uh, we've also got things like, you know, easily being able to crop a photo. Um, let's uh, exit that, I don't want to actually crop it. And as well, we have got an export button. Obviously, all customizable, uh, but you sort of get the idea. And finally, let's take a look at Photoshop. So on Photoshop, we've got another set of tools. Um, we can use this wheel to scroll between all of the millions of layers that we've got. And uh, we can use this wheel over here to zoom in and out of my face. I believe that this is still undo, redo, so like so. This one still brings up the action menus. And let's select this layer over here. I just want to change the exposure, so let's do that. I scroll over to that, and then we can see that we can make our background bright or dark and absolutely hideous. And so that was a quick tour of the Logitech MX Creative Console. It is something that looks rather understated, I would say, and subtle, but has simply transformed the way that I create content. And for just 349 Australian dollars or 200 US dollars, it is tremendous value for money, especially how you get three months worth of Adobe Creative Cloud for free included. And that also applies for those of you who have already subscribed, so that is absolutely brilliant for people like me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them below, and I'll try to get to you as soon as I can. And until next time, toodaloo.